We had a vote this week, just yesterday, from the House, and over half of the House voted to rubber stamp the illegal unconstitutional activities of the NSA and spying on American citizens with a dragnet. Now, we can look at that and we can say, since it was roughly half, we can say, uh, is the glass half empty or the glass half full? In other words, is the House half against liberty and half for slavery, a little bit more than half for slavery? Because, you know, that's the opposite of liberty. It's not security, it's slavery. And now Chris Christie is going after these dangerous libertarians, especially Rand Paul. As a former prosecutor and, and who was appointed um, by President George W. Bush on September 10th, 2001. Um, I just want us to be really cautious because this strain of libertarianism that's going through both parties right now and, and making big headlines I think is a very dangerous thought. President Obama has done nothing to change the policies of the Bush administration in the war on terrorism and I mean practically nothing. And you know why? Because they work. Now notice at the beginning of that clip what he said was, Obama has done nothing to change the policies of the Bush administration, the war on terrorism, practically nothing. We're in agreement. And you know why he said? Because they work. Well, you know what? He left out four words for the same people. Obama's done nothing to change the policies of Bush because they both work for the same people. Now, we've had a reply from the Paul, an assistant from Rand Paul, and he says, if Governor Christie believes the constitutional rights and privacy of all Americans are esoteric, he either needs a new dictionary or he needs to talk to more Americans because a great number of them are concerned about the dramatic overreach of our government in recent times. That was Doug Stafford, a, Stafford, a senior Paul advisor. Now we can look at this and we can say that, uh, as I said before, is the glass half empty or half full? Unfortunately, it's not nearly half full because there's a lot of misunderstanding from both Republicans and Democrats on this, even though, as we see on this particular vote, there's a growing libertarian streak on some issues where Republicans and Democrats can work across party lines. It was interesting to note that in that vote, all of the leadership, both Republican and Democrat, went with the statist approach, the approach that was anti-liberty, anti-constitution, actually. Now we have, besides Justin Amash's bill, which was unfortunately voted down this week, well, we now have a representative, a Democrat representative, who is introducing a bill that would repeal the Patriot Act and other surveillance laws, quote-unquote laws. It's the Surveillance State Repeal Act. And this is a quote from Representative Rush Holt. He says, the executive branch's groundless mass surveillance of Americans has turned our conception of liberty on its head. My legislation would restore the proper constitutional balance and ensure our people are treated as citizens first and not suspects. Now, part of that is the idea of balance, the idea that uh, we're going to be balancing liberty against security. That's a false notion, as we keep saying, the opposite of liberty is slavery. And you don't want to balance liberty and slavery. You want to have liberty. But he has some good things and some bad things in his Surveillance State Repeal Act. He wants to repeal the Patriot Act, which is good. He wants to repeal the FISA Amendment Act, which is also good because that's where emails are harvested. That's what's uh, going on with the NSA. But he wants to retain the ability for government, government surveillance capabilities to be targeted against a specific natural person. And you might want to look carefully at how he uses the terms natural person and citizen. There's a lot more to that than just the casual what meets the eye here. But then he goes down and he's got some very bad things here. Uh, seven, for example, increase the term of judges on the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court from seven to ten years and allow their reappointment. Why do we have a Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court? We need to have constitutional courts. That's one of the reasons why we need to get rid of FISA. And then the next one, in number eight, he says, mandate that same court utilize technologically competent special masters. Uh, that should cause you to be concerned. Special masters, for some reason, is not a term that's found in the Constitution. If the founders had seen that term, they would have immediately grabbed their rifles, and so should you and I. But our government has gone off the rails of authority. And as more evidence of that, the feds are now saying that they want web firms to turn over user account passwords. This is reported from CNET. It says the U.S. government has demanded that major internet companies divulge users' stored passwords, according to two industry sources familiar with those orders, which represents an escalation in surveillance techniques that has not previously been disclosed. And they point out that although 
they're asking for this information, they now have the capability, really, to go through and break your password. So why are they asking for this information? It really is establishing a territorial encroachment on our liberties. To go on with this article, it says, modern computers, especially the ones equipped with high-performance video cards, can unscramble passwords, and it talks about how quickly they can do it. And these are with uh, graphic processing units. They can go in and crack a 14-character Windows XP password in just six minutes using a GPU that is common on personal computers. So you can imagine what the NSA can do. They also say this is one of those unanswered questions. This is a legal expert saying this. Is there any circumstance under which they could get a password information, says Jennifer Granick, Director of Civil Liberties at Stanford University's Center for Internet and Society. She says, I don't know. And Ron Wyden, who's been very good in terms of pushing back against the NSA, however, says, the authority of the government is essentially limitless under the Patriot Act, under that law. Now, that's not true. As we're pointing out, the authority of government comes from the Constitution that they all swear allegiance to. And we can clearly see, as I just pointed out in the Fourth Amendment, they do not have authority. We do know that they do not have the authority to do that. These are not unanswered legal questions. This is the legitimate authority of government not being applied. We can't stress that enough. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. <laughs>